Today we're going to think about infinite data structures. So these are data structures that cannot be enumerated. You cannot enumerate its contents like a list, right? So when you think about a list, you could uh, perhaps think about it in terms of comprehension where you have some kind of set builder notation that tells you how to build a list, or you could just enumerate all the elements of a list, right? You could say, oh, the list has zero, one, two, three, four, five. Um, but with a stream, the idea is that it would be an infinite um, data structure. So it, it really is just an idea of an infinite sequence of values. They are ordered. Uh, and the, the idea is how do we implement this such so that our code can uh, range over it from one element to the next. So um, streams exist in many ways. You can think of them, um, for instance, in network programming, when you have some kind of um, source of data that is always producing, could be like a sensor or, or something like that, that is also producing, always producing elements, uh, values. In this case, could be like reads of temperature or something. But they are used in many uh, more like logical, uh, as a logical notion is also a very uh, strong one. So for instance, in reactive programming, it is that your um, the programming model is such that you are um, iterating over or reacting to a stream of um, events. So they could be, for instance, the mouse event or the keyboard event or opening a window, something like that. There's also... Um, as I said before, I, I talked about networking, but also in stream processing, whenever you have image or video codecs, usually that's the idea is where you're processing uh, the audio in, uh, the audio input or some kind of video recording, and you will write code that will iterate over that, and you don't really know a priori how much data there is, uh, or even if you can fit all of it in memory. So usually you have, basically you're operating on a window of data. Um, also, the idea of Unix pipes, where uh, programs output data and then other programs may process this data and pass it along to a next one. Uh, also, there's this idea of um, Java 8 streams and Microsoft Link, where you can uh, look at a data structure like a collection of values as a stream, it just happens that it's a finite stream of values. Okay, but what we're focusing on is really collections of infinite uh, data, right? So because we cannot allocate it all in memory, we have some way we have to somehow uh, constrain its allocation. And the way we can do that is, of course, by means of delaying evaluation, right? So we've learned about Thunk as a way of um, constraining evaluation, so just a function declaration that has expects no parameter, zero uh, arguments, um, or zero parameters. And um, the way we can build it is, of course, with cons. So you can think of a, of a stream as, as this very simple recursive data structure that has no base case. This is very important. So a stream is just a pair that takes some value, the value that you're holding in the stream, and the next element, so the right-hand side, will contain a thunk, right, to a stream. So it's a delayed stream there. Um, so for instance, we can start with this uh, powers of two, where we have a stream that starts with cons, and then you have one, and then you have thunk, and then two, and then a thunk, and then four, thunk, and uh, eight, and so on. It will go on forever. Um, so I have an example of code here that I've already written, so I've implemented this uh, powers of two. Um, so if I run it, I can show you that the first element of, um, again, this is a pair, so let me uh, copy paste this representation. Right, so it would be something like this, where you have one, and then, oops, let me, let me even do it like this. Then you have thunk, two, two, that has a thunk, to four, even make it a bit more concise, okay. And then a thunk, two, eight, and so on. 
right? So how would I implement? I mean, I could do this very easily, right? I could implement this just as such. So I could do uh, finite powers of two, um, where I could just write cons of one and then copy paste this, right? And then here, maybe just raise an error saying you went too far. Okay, so here's an example of a, of a tank, right? So if I, if we wanted just the, four, the first three powers of, th of two, I could rack it, uh, call this, uh, and you would just see, you know, cons with one and then a procedure, which is this first tank. Um, but the problem is that this, uh, implementation is finite, right? As you know, it only has, uh, one and then, oops, uh, and then two and then four, it doesn't have even eight, right? So, um, this is what I'm showing you, but I also want to show you that if I were to get the, the next value, I would uh, get an eight, but of course, as you can see, just by going through with car and CDR, it's quite cumbersome. So you can see to obtain the first element, I do car. And then to obtain the second one, I have to do CDR so that I get um, this bit right here. And then I have to call it because it's a thunk. So that's why you have the two parentheses here. And then finally, I have to do the car to obtain the element on the left. So that would return two. And then if I want to do, uh, if I want to obtain the four, I have to do CDR and carve that again. So CDR, uh, two parentheses, CDR, two parentheses and car. So of course I would like to have a better way of doing this, but this is uh, just an, uh, to show you that it works. So if I kind of change this to three, should get an error. Okay, so I get two, because that's what it, it is expecting. And if I wanted to, obtain eight, eight, I would have to do CDR two times, right? Oh, I think I'm missing parentheses. Okay, so it worked as well, just to convince him that this is indeed an eight. So it's expecting an eight, but got a nine. Of course, it should be eight. Okay. So, okay, so I somehow implemented the infinite data structure and I read its first uh, four values. I also showed you how to how one could go about and, and implement it if it were finite. Um, so let's do our first exercise where we want to count how many elements are in the stream up to um, a certain value. Okay, so in this case, I want to say I want to take a stream of powers of two and I want to know how many elements are uh, below, you know, are, are smaller than eight. And the idea is that my uh, count until will count how many elements will match this. And once it does not match, you just return the value. Okay, just to show you how, how would one think to implement and operate a data structure like such. So what we can do is first let's uh, define, copy paste the examples. Okay, so now what I wanna do, I wanna implement define count until, takes a stream, uh, and then it has to return something. So let's just do to do, just to make sure everything is working. Okay, now I get lots of errors, right? So it's saying error is match. Oh, because of course I need my predicate. So I'm gonna do predicate here. Okay, so now it's expecting values and it's just returning to do. Okay, so the idea is um, how do we get the value? We do car of the stream, right? So in this case, we would need to do a conditional. So let's do that. So we do a conditional. Maybe we even store the value somehow. So the head of the of the stream, 
is going to be car of the stream. Okay. And then what do we need to check? We need to check if um, the value is uh, matched by predicate. So if predicate of age holds, then we do something, something. Otherwise we do something else. Right. Um, then we close this and then we go close this. So if we run this again, now we, you know, we got something that some branches got this case, some branches didn't. So I got something, something else, something, something else. Okay. Because we haven't finished. So if the thing matches, um, what should we return? If it match matches, we should continue, right? Cause we want to count how many are, for instance, smaller or equal than eight. So in this case, it's three, uh, therefore, um, well, it should recurse, right? So we want to count until we want to do as predicate. Okay. Uh, and this will return some value and, uh, we found one more, so we can do one plus whatever value was returned from that. Okay. Otherwise, um, uh, the, the value has reached um the case where this is not smaller than so let's say it's eight uh, so if it's eight what do we need to return well we know that it if it finds eight then it should return zero right because it, it that doesn't match anymore so we want to count how many times it matches and therefore whenever we do predicate we add one so if we recurse we get whatever is in the rest of the stream and eventually we reach the definition let's see if this works Ah, interesting. So let's see, first of all, let's see if the first example works. Okay, ah, of course. What is going on here? So it's blocking forever, right? Uh, and this already all, usually tells us that there's something fishing going on. It's just, um, you're not making the stream smaller per se. So how do we make the stream smaller? Basically, we're always going through the first element. And of course, it's always um, predicate is always going to be true. And in this case, it's just uh, checking the same element multiple times, right? Because we don't do anything to the stream. So we need to advance the stream somehow. How do we advance it is with the CCDR. So let's do that. Right, because we want the second element and then we need to evaluate the thunk so that we get the actual stream itself. Okay. So we do that. Um, and it worked, right? It actually ran. Um, so just so that you're convinced, I want to put how many elements are smaller than 10 should see as well. Three. Ah, wait, cause eight also matters. Yeah. Sorry. Should be four. Okay, so now this works. You saw that the test failed and I fixed the number. So there we are. Um, now let's see if the other things work. Okay, so how many elements are smaller or equal than X? Well, there are zero elements because the first one fails already. Um, the first one is one, which is not, and therefore we get to this branch, we get zero, and therefore the whole thing gets zero. Okay, so this is cool. We got we got an idea of how to operate on uh, a stream. So uh, this is the implementation I wrote. Uh, this version is uh, uses a, a counter to increment the value. Uh, in my version, I counted the value after. But both are equivalent in this case. There's no notion of tail recursion here. Um, I mean, actually here there is, yeah. So this is the non-tail recursive version and this is tail recursive, tail recursive version. Okay. Um, next let's try to implement, uh, the powers of two. So how would we go about and implement this? Uh, let me delete this, pretend you didn't see it. Okay. So now I want to define powers of two. Okay. Uh, and we know that the return is a pair. So we, this is a function that takes zero parameters and when called, it returns a pair. 
so it should return one and then the, the following value. So as you can see, there's some counter that we need, you know, powers of two. Um, we would like to do something that primes the number. So of course the, the value that we want to store needs to be stored in some kind of variable. And therefore I'm going to define a, an internal function. So powers of two, iter or whatever, or aux for auxiliary. And I want to put the value. And when I want to return is one and then powers of two aux, where I do n, and I multiply by two. Okay, so I have here, I'm, I'm uh, storing the current power of two, okay? And of course, when I advance it, I have to multiply it by powers of two, and the element I want to return is going to be a powers of two. Okay, but this is not correct, right? Because if I try, let me close the parenthesis for now. It's not correct for two reasons. The first reason is because I haven't even initialized it. So if I define this function as such, it will return void because define returns void. Um, so instead I wanna return, um, I wanna call this function with the first power of two, right? Uh, so if I want to call it, I need the parenthesis. I need to say, start with one. So this is the value going to be stored here. But the problem, this, pro this function actually has a bug. And maybe try to pause the video and think about it, why this is wrong. Um, and while you think about that, I'm going to run it. Where's check equal? Oh, I actually forgot to, re I removed by mistake. Require rack unit. Okay. Okay. And what you see now is that it hangs. The reason it hangs is there's some uh, infinite recursion going on. Uh, yeah, at some point <laughs> it uses a lot of memory and the pro process is killed by the operating system. So. What is happening here? Why is this wrong? Well, because we're not delaying evaluation in any way, right? The key point here is that this recursion is happening. There's no base case. So this is just running all the time. So what we need to do is wrap a thunk around this. So if we wrap a thunk, you know, it has to be cons and then thunk. So the second thing has to be a thunk and it will contain pair because recursively it contains a power of two, which is a pair. Okay, so technically this should work. Let's see. Okay, so this is how we implement powers of two. Um, yeah, so this, this version is kind of defined differently where I place the thunk first. It's just a matter of style, honestly. It doesn't change much. Here, there's, there's uh, this, this uh, trick where you show, not trick, but where you have to parentheses one after the other doesn't show up. So I kind of like this style a bit more now. Um, but this is what I have in the slides. Okay, in the next uh, slide, we're in, in the next video, we're going to think about how to build a stream of constants of a stream that always returns the same value.